students so in the previous class we had completed the chapter and that is light shadow and reflection we studied that what is reflection what is light and what is the shadow okay light is what it is a form of energy which make the things visible to us we study that how shadow is formed with the help of a opaque object and what is reflection which includes the different terms like that of the incident ray reflected ray normal ray and how these reflections they help in the formation of the image okay so regular reflection is there and irregular reflection is there now the image which is formed whether it is a real image or a virtual image okay we studied uh, we the different examples which uh, forms the real image and other which forms the virtual image later on we also go through that of the plane mirror that uh, how the plane mirror or what kind of a image is formed uh, on the plane mirror or what are the different characteristic of the plane mirror or what are the different uses of the plane mirror okay and finally we studied about that of the periscope how it what is its construction what is structure and uh, on what principle it work and what is its working okay now today we will start with the new chapter of the science and that is electricity and circuit okay now when we talk about the electricity and circuit student first of all we will start with that of the electricity okay so in the previous chapter if we talk about that of the electricity student so in the previous chapter we have studied that there are two different sources of the lights are there like that of the natural source of light is there or man made sources of light is there so natural source of light is what by which you get the 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 light which we get from that of the nature okay whose source is the nature only like that of the sunlight or the star na or that of the firefly so these are what these are the natural sources of the light what about the man made sources of the light so the electric bulb or the tube light or the fluorescent lamp all these things are the man made sources of the light now let us think that if suppose there is no light at night then what we will do what is the problem that we face the first and foremost thing that we are not able to see the things very clearly okay the things which is around us will be not visible to us and if there is no light especially at the dark if there is no ne if uh, there is no artificial or that of the man made light so this light is due to that of the electric bulb this light is due to that of the tube light so basically they glows just because of the electric current flows in it so electricity itself it is very important not only thing, not only that of the electric bulb or that of the uh, the other lamps but you see this electricity we use in operating the different appliances also and which make our work very easy so we can say that electricity is a very important part of our life to carry the things very smoothly now if we talk about the electricity students now you see here students electricity is what it is a form of energy okay electrical energy or electricity is the same thing so electricity it is a form of energy like that of the thermal heat light mechanical or that of the sound energy so we can see that electricity is a very easy to convert it into one form to that of the other form of energy okay so we can say the electricity is useful because it can be converted from one form of energy to the other form of energy it means the electrical energy can be converted to that of the heat energy or that of the light energy or that of the mechanical energy how is it student if suppose we have taken a immersion rod okay immersion rod is what which help in uh, in uh, heating that of the water 
okay so we use in the winter uh, season the immersion rod so if you keep the immersion rod in a bucket which is full of water and you keep the plug in the uh, you keep that plug in the socket okay then what will happen you will see that the water is starts uh, heated up and finally starts boiling so what happened the electricity which is uh, uh, taking by that of the immersion rod is get converted into the heat energy okay the electricity is used by the immersion rod okay we use that uh, immersion rod and uh, uh, when we switch on then only the immersion rod starts working then what is this the electricity is gained by that of the immersion rod and because of that the rod become heated and makes the water to boil you can see the electric heaters that we use at a uh, uh, winter there also the coil is there and you are supplying the electric energy to it okay you are supplying electricity to it but you will feel the heat which is coming out from that of the electric heater so basically we can say that this electricity is get converted into the thermal or that of the heat energy thermal it means heat student don't get don't get confused thermal means heat energy okay so here electricity can be converted to that of the heat energy now light is there so electric bulbs are there so electric bulb they are connected when we up supply electricity to it or to the tube light when we supply electricity to it then what will happen it get uh, converted or it starts it makes the bulbs to glow or the tube light to glow so here the electric energy gets converted into that of the light energy okay the same thing with that of the mechanical pump uh, mechanical energy so you see the water pump so basically the function of the water pump is is to carry the water deep from the ground to take it to the upper above the ground or upper level okay so basically what happen you see when you uh, turn off your motor turn on your motor at that time the water starts coming okay so it help in converting the electric energy to that of the mechanical energy too okay so by which we can say that this electricity it help in converting the one form of energy into the other form of energy okay so it is very easy to convert the electricity or it very easy to convert this electrical energy into one form of energy to the other form of energy you can see here that electric energy it illuminates bulb the example is given here student so it illuminates bulb what kind of energy it is it is a light energy because bulb it glows okay so when you switch on the light the bulb starts glowing so you are supplying electricity to the bulb and due to which it produces light so so the electric energy get converted into light energy thermal energy heats up the food okay so if you are taking a oven okay so what happen when you keep the thing in the microwave or in the oven then what happen it will help in heating the food okay not only this the heater that we use to prepare the food that is also help in heating the food so here electricity we are providing to that appli appliance and it help in converting it into the heat energy then moves engine you see the move engine uh, the, like that of the electric train so the engine which is used it to perform the mechanical energy but the electricity is provided by us it means the electric energy help in converting the mechanical energy now see here transform uh, into the loud waves in a loud speaker you see what happened in the loud speaker or uh, uh, that of the uh, speakers that you use at your home or in the school so basically we keep, we put that in the plug and when we switch on only then the mic or that of the uh, loud speaker starts working so you are providing the electric energy to it which help it converting into the sound energy so it is very useful because it help in converting the electric energy into the various form of energy okay so we can say that this electric energy basically uh, help in making the things easier for us or it help in uh, in uh, making us to use the different types of appliances 
Now we will understand that uh, what are the uh, different examples by which we can understand that electricity is useful to us. So you can see here student electricity, it is convenient and a clean form of energy that is very commonly used in our everyday life. So it is very convenient and uh, it is a kind of uh, energy that we use to, uh, to perform the various activities in our life. So you see here lamps, electric lamp is there. So this electric lamp, it glows and gives light. Microwave or uh, uh, torch is there so what happened in a torch student you simply uh, switch off the switch on the button and then what happened the electric lamp or the that of the torch it glows okay so electric lamp when you turn on this uh, the the switch at that time the lamp glows so it is basically uh, work on uh, with the help of the electricity or you can uh, if you see that of the refrigerator student so in the refrigerator it help in uh, refrigerator or that of the air conditioner so this uh, AC or that of the refrigerator it makes the temperature cool it help in lowering the temperature and thus it uh, provide it uh, makes us comfortable during the summer season microwave is there so microwave is there or electric heater is there what is its role the microwave help in heating the food and due to which uh, we can eat or we can get a, a good taste or a, a hot food okay then electric toothbrush is there or a fan is there which also help us in making our body temperature lower. TV is there which operate on the basis of the electricity and you know that television it help in a various ways in giving the information from the one uh, country to that of the other country. So it is because of the electricity it works. It works with the help of the electricity and due to which we can use it conveniently electric train is there so these day you see students electric trains are there so uh, th that works uh, with the help of the electricity electric iron is there or that of the mix mixture is there so electric iron or the mixture they uh, help in uh, in and uh, reducing our workload okay so these basically uh, makes our life very easy water pump is there so water pump what happened it, it takes the uh, water from deep underground and help in taking it to the above level or above that of the ground electric kettle is there or a remote control garage door is there so all these things are water they are basically work uh, on the principle of that of the electricity so, sorry there are lot of examples which uh, work on the basis of the electricity so have we had discussed about the uses of that of the electricity student now we will talk that how an electricity can be dangerous to us Yes, electricity can be dangerous. It can give uh, socks or it get it can give a fire. So it is it it is dangerous. Okay. So basically, what happened if an electric wire is there and electric appliances are there? If we are not able to handle it carefully, or we are handling the electric wire or that of the electrical appliances carelessly, then what happened? The person can get electric shock. Okay, and this it causes the severe burn and even death of that of the person. Okay. So if, uh, if we are improper in handling to that of the electricity appliances or that of the electricity, so it will going to uh, give shock, it gives going to give severe burn or it will going to give, uh, it will uh, even cause the death of that person okay not only this the improper handling of that of the electricity it can cause fire also okay so you have seen that a, a danger sign is a usually uh, displays on that of the electric pole 
or that of the electric substations or electric transformer. So you have seen a danger sign is there and that danger sign it actually indicate it actually uh, help um, the people to uh, to make them understand that electricity can be very dangerous okay so these uh, uh, danger sign it is present at the or it is displayed at uh, many other places and help in warning the people that they sh uh, they should not come in contact with them because uh, this can be dangerous electricity can be dangerous to them okay now we should never use the electricity from the power point or that of the socket also okay we will ne we should never use it okay or uh, even in the home or the school uh, for performing the experiments because it is very unsafe as well as it is very dangerous also so we should never use the electricity from the power point or from the socket understand that what are the different causes by which we can say that electricity can be dangerous or why we should use the electricity safely so you can see here student there are some of the uh, things by which uh, the electricity can be unsafe or it may cause a shock or that uh, it may cause even death of that person or we can say it makes it or or it's proof that uh, electricity it is dangerous or it can be dangerous now see here the faulty circuit if the circuit is not correct okay if a circuit is not proper if it is a, a false circuit is there at that time it can be dangerous to touch it because it may cause a shock as well as short circuit okay broken appliances absolutely broken appliances there so what will happen at that time when you touch that portion a uh, portion which uh, is uh, having a good uh, which where the uh, electric current flows in a good amount at that time if you touch the uh, that broken appliance or any of the part of the that broken appliances it may cause a shock to you electric shock to you okay water and electricity combination yes student water it is a good conductor of a heat and electricity so what happened as the water comes in a contact with that of the electricity it starts flowing very rapidly okay so it that water makes it more uh, makes uh, or gives path to that of the electric current to pass through it okay so water it is a very good conductor of electricity so we can say the water and electricity combination it uh, can be dangerous you have seen that uh, the people they used to say that uh, with the wet hand you do not touch the that uh, of the plug or that of the socket or any of the electric appliances because it may give shock to you okay overuse socket if the socket is very old or if it is overused generally it is because of the uh, if it is old socket then possibility is there then it may cause a shock to you okay so these are some of the uh, some of the points by which we can say that it can be dangerous okay so if the circuit is not good if the appliances which we are using is broken or is damaged okay so if any of the part if it is broken and where the electric current the flow of the electric current is more then if you touch that part it will going to give shock to you okay water and electricity combination i told you that uh, water is what it is a very good conductor of uh, uh, electricity okay so the water and electricity combine it will increase its uh, effect okay so that's why the, we should not touch that of the electric appliances or uh, a wire uh, by wet hand or a wet body okay overuse socket if the socket is old then possibility is there that it will cause electric so so these are some of the electricity uh, uh, causes okay now we will see the another term and that is the dry cell now if we talk about that of the electric cell student so electric cell is what is a cell which consumes very less amount of electricity 
If we compare it with that of the power station, then the electricity volt will be very, very less. You see the power station, the total uh, volt which is uh, uh, get, give, uh, provided by that of the power station, it provides 220 volt of electricity to us. But if you compare to that of the dry cell or that of the electric cell, so it will provide very less amount of electricity and that is 1.5 volt. Now if you see here the electricity student, uh, sorry electric cell, so electric cell is what since it provides a very less amount of electricity so the possibility of getting the electric shock is very less. So we can say that this electric cell is actually the safe for performing the experiment because right now we were discussing that uh, we should not use that of the electricity directly by uh, in that of the experiment in the science experiment or in the school because it will give a shock to you okay but if we talk about that of the electric cell or that of the dry cell so you see that since it is providing very less amount of a volt of electricity you see here it provide only 1.5 volt of electricity so it is safe for performing the experiment okay it is very safe for performing the experiment in the science lab or it, it is very easy to use in the school also electric cell is also known as that of the dry cell okay now we will see that what is actually the electric cell before we go further and understand the structure uh, and that of the the things which is present in that of the dry cell and that of the working also we should understand an another term and that is battery Okay, so you have heard and you have used in our uh, daily life uh, that battery. What is battery student? Battery is when two or more cell, one cell is there, one dry cell is there, then it combined with the other cell, that will also combine with the other cell. When these cells, they combine together, they join together, they make the battery. So battery is nothing when the two or more different cells when they combine together then they form the battery. Now in market you have heard about cell also, you have heard about battery also and these cells or these uh, batteries they are uh, present in market, they are available in market in different shape and different sizes. Okay, so battery basically when two or more cells they combine together, they join together, then they form the battery. Later on I will discuss that how the battery is formed, how the cell they combine with each other to form that of the battery. Okay, now you see here student, when we talk about the cell, this is the dry cell and dry cell why the name is a dry cell student the name is dry cell because it do not contain any of the liquid chemical in it okay so since does not consisting of any kind of a liquid chemical we use the term for it and that is dry cell okay it means a cell consisting of a chemical in it. I'll explain you that what is the role of the chemical. Let me tell you that dry cell, the name it is because there is no liquid chemical is present in it. Now, if you see that of the electric cell student, then what you will find? You will see that it is having a cylindrical shape. Okay, so you will see the, uh, the cell, it is having the cylindrical shape and in this cylindrical sh shape, if you see the top portion of that of the uh, this cylindrical shape structure, you find a metal cap is there. You can see here student, this is what? This is a metal cap. You can see this in the uh, this battery also, this portion is what? It is a metal cap. Okay, so the upper portion of the cylindrical dry cell or this dry cell is actually the metal cap. 
now a small metal cap is there on the one side and if you see the lower portion of this dry cell then a disc like a structure is there a metal disc like a structure is there so on the top of it a small uh, metal cap is present and at the bottom of it there is no cap but a disc shape structure is there that is a metal disc like a structure is present here okay so metal cap is there at the bottom metal disc is there now when we talk about this metal cap student or that of the uh, that of the metal disc what is the role why we are talking about it actually this metal cap whenever you see the dry cell the metal cap it shows that it is the positive terminal it means a dry cell is there and dry cell basically it have a two terminals in it terminals one is the positive terminal and the another one is the negative terminal so in a cell two terminals are there one is positive one is negative terminal now the positive terminal basically we say that this terminal this end okay this end is a positive end or a positive terminal when the that, that portion which consisting of the metal cap is a positive terminal okay this metal disc metal disc is the another terminal and that is known as the negative terminal of the dry cell basically when we use the term terminal it is talking about the two ends a dry cell is there student and this dry cell is one second this dry cell is actually having the two two ends okay this is the first end upper end and that is the lower end these two end we call them as a terminal okay so two ends are there upper end and the lower end where we use the term for it that is terminal it means two ends are there and two terminals are there that is we call as a terminal so the upper end where the metal cap is present that terminal is known as the positive terminal and the metal disc portion is known as the negative terminal if you see a dry cell also there also most of the time the positive and the negative is written okay so that positive and negative it indicate its terminal now if we see that of the dry cell it is having the two terminal positive and the negative terminal and one more thing is there in this dry cell which is when you cut this dry cell into half or when you cut the dry cell then what you will find you will find that some matter is present in it that matter is actually a, a type of a chemical which is present in that of the dry cell okay so you will see a, a black substance is present in that of the dry cell when you cut the dry cell that black substance is actually the chemicals which is stored in it or chemicals which is present in it now what is the role of these chemicals which is present in that of the dry cell student so these chemicals basically we use this chemicals to produce the electricity it means these chemicals are responsible for production of the electricity in the dry cell okay so these chemicals if it is used up it means uh, uh, that when all the chemicals which is present in that of the electric cell if it is used up at that time we can say the battery uh, it will not work okay so the chemicals they are responsible for production of the electricity so when all the chemicals which is stored in that of the dry cell it will uh, if it is used up then it will not going to produce the electricity now if we talk about the cell student so if uh, a cell is there uh, a lot of a cell is there which we used and throw it okay so there the chemical which is present in it that when it gets uh, used up and all the chemical is used up at that time the battery uh, the uh, cell or uh, it get uh, uh, useless and we just throw it but you have seen a lot of a cell is there a lot of a battery is there which we recharge it again so it 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 can be rechargeable it means again when you provide a electricity to that particular cell or battery at that time it will start working again
so that kind of a cell is known as the electric cell it means the cell which work on uh, with the help of that of the electricity we call them as electric cell an electric cell if it get discharge we can recharge it with the help of the electric current or bypassing the electric current to it so you have seen the electric uh, cell it is used a very good example is that of the mobile okay so in a mobile even the electric cells these day it is used in that of the uh, tv also or it is used in that of the camera also or in a radio also in a transistor also so all these are the uh, different examples where this electric cell can be used so basically the cell which uh, uh, which we can recharge it again with the help of electricity that is the electric cells other cells as the chemical stored in it get consumed get uh, ended or get uh, 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 over or uh, uh, then what we will do we will uh, throw it Um, outside okay that means it becomes a useless so if it is all used up then we can throw it okay and if it is recharged uh, rechargeable then we can uh, recharge it by uh, giving the electricity to it okay now we will see that of the you here you can say that ordinary electric cell it cannot be recharged but the other cells it can be recharged now you see here this is the combination of the different cells as they combine together student so you see here different types of cells are there and they combine together to form the battery okay so one cell is there the positive end is com combined to that of the wire the other wire is there which help in connecting to that of the uh, other cell then one cell which is uh, from the base from the metal base that is from the negative terminal and again it is attached to that of the positive then negative then positive so one thing that you are seeing here that uh, one cell is connected to that of the other cell in such a manner that the positive terminal will be connected to the negative terminal of the other cell okay so this is the negative term or the negative terminal is attached or is connected to the positive terminal of the other cell so when the two cells they combine together always the opposite terminal should combine to each other so this negative terminal combines to that of the positive terminal and again this negative terminal combined to the positive here also the negative terminal combined to the positive so you can say that this negative terminal basically it combined with positive terminal it means the opposite terminal should attach with or should combine with each other to form the battery so battery is what where the two or more different uh, two or more cells they combine together and they always combine in which the negative terminal is attached to the positive terminal of the other battery okay 